In this video, I'm going to go through some of the pros and cons of bulking versus cutting. Now, it really does depend on what stage of your fitness journey you're on right now, which one you're going to sort of choose to do. And I don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to take my word for it after this video because I've never experienced really cutting in a fitness as before. I've been skinny like for 15 years, for 15 to 14 years. And then I started actually like bulking up and eating a lot more food when I was around 15 years old and I'm 16, nearly going on 17 now. But I can't really say a lot about cutting and I will give things from what I've learned about things on the internet and just people that I've been around, friends, etc., family. But I can mostly speak for bulking because I've been experiencing it for quite a long time and I don't plan to sort of stop anytime soon. I think a calorie surplus does work for me, but there are definitely some things that people should know about it, depending on just where you're at and what you're thinking. You could be, when you could have started your fitness journey, you could have been overweight and you've been cutting and now you, you don't know what to do. You don't want to bulk up again because there's factors that affect your mental health and all that sort of stuff. So I just want to go through certain things that I don't want you to be deterred or sort of spurred on by any of the things that I say. I just want you to keep an open mind and understand how the things that I'm going to say are actually going to affect your specific circumstances and quality of life because because while I want to have potentially a very apt brain with decision making I know bulking and eating more food than I need in a calorie surplus is going to in some way or another actually affect that and so it's it's my quality of life you might not like need any decision making whatsoever so you can just bulk and bulk and bulk and just do that but that might be something that you really like need like you have to make good decisions on the dot every single day that's how, that's how your work is um structured that's how your career like goes about you have to do like stock trading or something i don't know but it really does, it really does depend on your specific circumstances and how your life situation is as to what you just take with a pinch of salt doesn't really matter and what actually matters to you and your heart but i'm going to start with cutting because i feel like it's the one that is more commonly talked about on the internet and it's probably the one that the people on this video are going to want the most and it's probably the, going to be the shortest section, so those who do want bulking can probably skip maybe two to three minutes to get onto the pros and cons of bulking. Now, one of the pros of cutting is you will be very, very sharp in your mind. Now, this does depend on how exactly you cut. The food that you eat on a cut or on any diet affects your decision making and affects your brain power. If you have a healthy diet on a cut, as many people on the fitness um, spectrum do, you will have very sharp very very incredibly sharp decision making you will be very alert and you will be very productive as well uh intermittent fasting is where you like don't eat breakfast because food is something that actually takes a lot of energy to digest and then you only then once it's been digested and broken down can you experience the energy itself from that food so it's like you have to go through the pain and then you, you finally get the sort of burst immediately afterwards because of this intermittent fasting states that if you want to get a lot of work done then you just don't eat in the morning and you'll get that work done in the morning and then you can eat a lot sort of during the sort of noon, afternoon, evening period. And while you'll be more tired and a bit more lethargic, then you're going to be very incredibly alert and sharp in that sort of period that you can potentially make your work period or whatever. But if you're going to eat like sugar and processed carbs and processed food, like on your cut, still be in a calorie deficit, but be on your cut and like just like sporadically spread it throughout the day that's not going to change anything your decision making is going to be incredibly impaired still and you're not going to be alert you're going to be lethargic you're going to be like sometimes i've experienced this when i've had bad food before but you're going to be like but you're going to be sitting down and your head's going to be like hunched forward and you're just going to be like mouth breathing just just not really noticing and understanding what you're doing because your mind is zoned out unmindful just completely away from the situation so that's just the kind of stuff that junk food does to you in general no matter whether you're on a bulk or a cut but the calorie deficit itself you will lose weight so you get to sort of see the insertions more you lose body fat if you're not getting enough calories which is the amount your body needs however much you like the optimal way that you would maintain your exact weight is you would eat the exact amount of calories that you burn every single day and that amount of calories you burn would be slightly different every single day so it would be like it would have to be absolutely perfect basically unimaginable to happen but when you're in a calorie deficit your body will take some of the fat deposits that you have and it will use the fat that's in those fat deposits it will break it down inside of the cells and it will convert it into things like acetic acid which can then be used to make energy essentially so that's how you lose weight when you want to cut because 
your body needs the sort of like fat that you've stored there so you will lose weight you will lose body fat and being incredibly sharp in the mind and a lot more athletic you'll be able to run quicker you'll be able to like be a lot more nimble and agile they're some of the main benefits because you are slimmer you're smaller and you have that like incredibly sharp mind and obviously you will lose weight they're the main pros of cutting some of the um disadvantages of cutting there aren't too many that i know of one of them is you can develop such an obsession with your own body in a psychological sense that you just don't want to stop and you can get so emaciated so unhealthy in the opposite direction that it just doesn't benefit you whatsoever because some people if they've been overweight for a lot of their life they can cut and they will, they will have a very successful cut but then they don't want to bulk up again so they will just stay at like an emaciated weight for a prolonged period rather than just to sort of get the temporary satisfaction of having like a really nice sort of um chiseled physique in a way they'll just stay like that and they'll not eat enough and it just won't end well for their body's process in a way so that's one of the main psychological risks that can occur when cutting but that can only apply to some people and if you have that sort of knowledge that i've just given you if that can happen to some people hopefully it won't be you and you now understand that so cutting can be a lot easier for you in the future one of the other things that you're at risk of when you're cutting is nutritional deficiencies if you're eating less calories than what you're burning on a day-to-day -day basis you you're eating a little calories like quite obviously but that means that you might not be getting the optimal amount of nutrition nutrients yeah, nutrients in that you actually need things like the vitamin c's things like the vitamin e's or the proteins i think you're probably mo most at risk of a protein deficiency if you're going to be cutting because while you can have vitamin c supplements supplements for like fatty uh, omega-3 oil and all that sort of stuff i guess the oil will be calorific but the supplements for vitamins and minerals which aren't calorific in any way shape or form they can still be supplemented inside of your body and while there are there are uh studies and things that show that having supplements you kind of having supplements you you still get the the goodness out of them you still get the vitamins and the minerals but you don't get as much of them as what it says on the tin because if you have 500 milligrams of vitamin c in an apple for instance that's probably wrong that that definitely is wrong in fact and a 500 milligram vitamin c supplement because of the fact that apple contains so many phytochemical compounds so many other chemicals that vitamin c works well with to be absorbed and all that sort of stuff it means that the supplement just doesn't work as well and you won't have as much absorbed and be able to be utilized so that's just another thing to consider but yeah because you're not eating as much food nutritional deficiencies you are at risk of or most at risk of compared to someone who is bulking who is eating a lot of food on a day-to-day -day basis so that's some of the pros and cons for cutting but now on to bulking and i'll start with the pros of bulking but the first thing which is seemingly quite obvious is that you put on muscle because when you're eating more food than you need the maintenance that you have the exact amount of calories that you need to eat on a day-to-day -day basis which is going to be different every single day as i've mentioned before you are fulfilling that so you are like eating the maximum amount of food every single day and some and that means when you exercise your body has the the energy and the ability to build muscle through the sort of like tears and then it's gonna have protein and all, all that so all those sort of other complicated chemical processes but because you're also putting on fat because of the surplus you just get stronger because you have more mass you can bench press more when you bulk your bench will probably either maintain or go down slightly when you cut because you do lose a bit of muscle it's negligible not that much you probably wouldn't notice it in like all that way. obviously you're going to notice the fat loss but the muscle itself isn't going to decrease in size all that much and you will be able to put that muscle on almost instantaneously because you've actually had that muscle before it's like when you have an injury and like maybe you've got like a broken leg and you have a cast on your leg and then your leg looks like a twig once you take it off you'll be able to sort of put that muscle on a lot quicker than what it took before because your body sort of knows how to do it in a weird stretch of the imagination so you get stronger and you put on muscle and you become bigger which is great for someone who's skinny like me who's been not only short but also skinny their entire life you will grow more when you eat more probably one of the problems that i've had because i used to be very fussy probably wouldn't wasn't meeting my like actual calorific needs so i was still losing weight but there wasn't really any weight to lose to be honest so it was just the calories that i actually needed it was taking away from how much that i needed to grow in, in terms of height with bone and all that sort of stuff and that means that i probably wasn't fulfilling my growth potential as much as i like could have over those years but i think that's being slightly counteracted 
now when I am actually eating enough food anyway, but you will grow more in height as well as in general size when you bulk. And if you previously had like higher testosterone when you were sort of starting to bulk, the fat is going to sort of build up evenly. So it's not going to suddenly turn into a beer belly. You're not going to suddenly have a big stomach. It's going to spread out evenly. And that's a very like good thing to have instead of you bulking, but it's like your arms still look the same and your legs still look the same, but your stomach's just bulging a little bit more than it used to. That's that's not something that anyone really wants to experience. So getting bigger everywhere is like, it's, it's one benefit of bulking, but not everyone can experience it depending on how your testosterone levels are, I want to say, in a way. I mean, obviously you will still build fat everywhere, but it will just be at a faster rate in certain places, depending on where, you're, where your genetics define the places where fat can easily build up. But there are other psychological benefits. You can fill out shirts more and you just, you don't look as scorny. I mean, there's some people, if you cut, if I cut right now, no one would know that I go to the gym because even though I'd have abs, even though I'd have nice insertions, I would not be big whatsoever. That's why I'm still gonna probably continue to bulk for like another two-ish years because I need to be in that calorie surplus to actually put on weight everywhere, not just go all out for four months eating fast food and have like a big stomach. That's just not the way that I wanna be in a way. I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like sacrifice the, uh, I've still gained a little bit of fat and muscle on my arms, but now I'm like actually fat and I'll just take it slowly for two years because I'm starting these good habits at such a young age anyway. I feel like that's an important thing to mention as well. And there were probably a few things that I missed out on the cutting pros and cons, but now I'm going to go on to the bulking cons because boy, there definitely are some. Food takes a lot of energy to di digest. I mentioned this. So when you are having your five meals a day, like I do, I, I have breakfast, I have a sandwich, not technically a meal, I suppose, but it's big enough for me to sort of see a noticeable effect. Then I'll have lunch, then I'll have dinner, then I'll have my evening porridge. I have majority of my carbs in the evening porridge and the oats because carbs specifically take a lot of energy to digest more than the other couple of macronutrients, the fats and the proteins. So that means that if I'm lethargic, it's fine because I'm going to be asleep anyway. So I try to sort of do that 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 way in in some sort of sense but yes you do feel lethargic if you are bulking but you can minimize the impact by bulking healthily lean bulking as it's called called if you bulk for six months in like a cycle just eating absolute junk food it, you're gonna feel very lethargic because that takes a long time to digest because it's not really real food and your body has a hard time handling it so that's just adding on to the unnecessary pressure of the sheer amount of just food and calories in the first place that's one of the things you will feel feel lethargic and that's going to take energy away from your brain power your decision making will be impaired less so obviously if you healthy bulk but it's still going to not be as good as it was as good as good as it could be if you were on like a slight calorie restriction slash maintenance perfect maintenance it's like you, you kind of know what i'm saying so your decision making is going to be impaired if you're doing like studying you run a business full time maybe bulking isn't the best for your life situation maybe you can make the sacrifice but it does impair your decision making. That's why people use intermittent fasting. And it's going to be hard to bulk on intermittent fasting without spreading the load. Because if you're spreading the load on bulking, if I have five meals a day, pretty evenly spread throughout the, I don't know, 24 minus eight hours, 16 hours that I'm awake. If you're going to only have that, the, the exact amount of food and calories that someone like me is having in half of that, you're going to feel very, very tired during the eight hours, but you will feel very, very alert then. So maybe it's not worth the sacrifice and to sort of um, balance it out throughout the whole day. I don't know. It's really just your choice and depends on your current life situation. And other disadvantages, maybe you could just, you could lose your abs, you could lose your jawline through things like face fat. You do just build more fat. Like it's in the sort of name, it's bulking, it's bulking up. Maybe that's the thing that you want. So that's great, but it's worth someone who may be new to fitness and new to the gym. That That, that does happen when you go on a bulk that does happen when you're bulking for an extended period of time another thing that happens is a lot of your hormones will decrease things like testosterone decrease the fatter that you are because estrogen can be made inside of fat cells if you have more fat cells you have more estrogen and testosterone is the thing that makes estrogen so your brain will decrease testosterone to sort of reduce the amount of estrogen that's being made inside of those like those fat cells from testosterone and all that sort of stuff but another thing that i will say if you're cutting as well a con of that is if you do go too far, I'd say below 8% body fat, then you would have a sharp drop in testosterone because your body is just not, ab not able to cope with the lack of macronutrients and vitamins and minerals as well. So that's another thing that you're worth to know if you're cutting. But hopefully, if you were more interested in that section, hopefully they haven't left by now. But anyway, but anyway, 
you will be slower, you'll be less nimble, less agile, essentially the opposite of cutting because you are bigger, your your body is more mass, you gain weight, it's harder to turn as quickly, it's harder to, like, if you were the guy on a rugby team, for instance, just, like, the agile one, the one that can just, like, move, uh, like, like, lightning and just be able to avoid everyone that's just, like, you know, you kind of know what I mean by that, right? If you're like going to decide to bulk up to an insane immense level, you're not going to have the same ability because you're going to be, you're going to be bigger. You're going to not be as nimble and as agile and as flexible. So that's some disadvantages, if they even are disadvantages in your particular situation that come from bulking. But they are obviously things that I've personally experienced. I kind of like it's not fun. It's fun. It's all right to be flexible. It's good to be nimble and agile. It's one of being really one of my best physical traits for the majority of my life. And I'm still pretty skinny in the grand scheme of things. There's loads of people that like are fatter than not fatter but have a higher BMI and have a higher body like have a higher body fat percentage than me who aren't even bulking and are, like the people that are struggling to lose weight in a sense. But yeah, I'm gonna take it slowly because I don't want to impact my thought and decision making while in school and while having a YouTube channel and stuff like that. So I'm gonna take it slowly. That's the beauty of starting from such a young age. But yeah, with that, that's about all. That's the pros and cons of bulking that I personally have experienced and observed. There's also a lot of things like insecurity with bulking that come with this sort of stuff as well. But yeah, that's like psychological things. And it really just does depend. So you could potentially experience a completely new disadvantage to bulking that no one else would experience before. As long as it's not something that you specifically ate. And it's actually the whole grand scheme of bulking that has affected your quality of life. But with that, I recommend subscribing. And I love this community of young tribal people who are willing to improve themselves. So much fun they already have. And good luck.